Tantalus, the last one to join them, ready for the predominant. Stand by, under orders, and they're racing. The next for missed it by two or three lengths, and first out was Tantalus, but Mary Merlin going on. Mary Merlin, the far side, takes it up from Tantalus in the early stages. Then in third is Millennium Moonbeam, followed then on the outside in fourth by Fazeo. Further back then is uh, Norton right there in the centre from Roskis, two lengths to Bogus Dreams and three away St. Expedi. Heading through the first two and a half furlongs and Mary Merlin out in front by two lengths and setting a good pace. From in second for Zaya, two lengths away Tantalus just being shaded now by Roskis on the outside. Up there as well too in that group is uh, Millennium Moonbeam followed two lengths away by Norton. Back in the field at this stage, second last is Bogus Dreams and St. Expedi is last of all. Climbing uphill now towards the highest point of the course. And the leader on the left in the green cap is Mary Merlin from being chased now in the white face. Uh, there is uh, Millennium Moonbeam on the outside. Roskius now moves up into a clear second. Fazeo goes third. Tantalus trapped a little bit wide on that turn. Followed two lengths away by Millennium Moonbeam. Further back in the field is Norton from Bogus Dreams and St. Expedi is last of all. Racing downhill, short of five furlongs to travel. And Mary Merlin out in front of half length to Roskius, really serving it up on the outside. Tantalus getting closer now, followed then on the far side by Fazeo. Then uh, Millennium Moonbeam from Bogus Dreams and Expedi taking closer order and Norton has dropped out last they've got just over three furlongs to travel in the predominant and Roskia strikes for home Mary Merlin coming under pressure Tantalus there on the outside in the pink cap followed by St. Expedi coming there very strongly on the near side. Bogus Dreams from his next, followed by Fazeo and Millennium Moonbeam. Roskis has gone for home past the two, but here's St. Expedi on the outside, moving up to throw out a challenge now. Tantalus just behind them, followed by Bogus Dreams. Roskis answering the call, though, at the furlong. It's Roskis the far side, about a nose in front. St. Expedi on the near side, trying hard to wear him down. Roskis and St. Expedi stride for stride. Roskis on the far side, the near side, St. Expedi, they race towards the line, Roskis digging deep, Roskis just from St. Expedi, five or six lengths away, third then is Bogus Dreams, followed next in the field by Tantalus, Fazeo, then Mary Merlin, uh, back behind them, Millennium Moonbeam, and Norton is last to finish. It's a photo finish, it's between number six, Roskis on the far side, and St. Expedi, the near side, a bob of the heads, Roskis maybe just by a short head from on the near side St. Expedi, but it is a photo. And then a gap of six or seven lengths to uh, Bogus Dreams in third, Tantalus in fourth. They're followed by Fazeo in fifth. Then in sixth is Millennium Moonbeam. And it's official now. Number six, Roskis gets it. That's Millennium Moonbeam followed by Mary Merlin and Norton is last to finish. So the winner is number six, Roskius, owned by Godolphin, trained by Sayed bin Sarua and ridden by Frankie Dottori. Second is number seven, it's an Expedi, owned by John Pierce, trained by Jeff Rag and ridden by Daryl Holland. And third, number two, Bogus Dreams, owned by Dwayne Woods, trained by Sean Woods and ridden by John Reed. Fourth is Tantalus. Roskius, the 9-2 winner, and gets the quota 25-1 to 1 from the tote for the derby. St. Expedi is 40-1 to 1 for the derby, and the favourites, King's Best, at 7-2. to 2. That's with the tote. And the distances, a short head and six lengths, a short head and six lengths. Let's have a look now at the way Roskius did it. Well, what a finish this was. It was set up for a very fast pace so early on in Mary Merlin, but at this stage, Frankie takes over. Daryl Holland has nearly pulled off a wonderful bit of riding on Sant Expedi because the horse pulls very hard. He deliberately dropped him out early, settled him early in the race and nearly caught him. But Frankie de Tori gets a double in a real driving finish, a 26 to one double for Frankie. Yes, Frankie did very well here. He's kept his horse gone. He actually puts his stick away in the last 100 yards and just rides him hands and heels because he always thought he was going to be, uh, get the better of Darrow. But as you said, Claire, uh, Darrow has done nothing wrong because this fellow who uh, was trying to do a high rise by uh, winning his maiden at Pontefract and they win the derby. But uh, Darrow there uh, just cannot get his horse's head in front. Uh, this horse who has to be settled out the back earlier uh, because he pulls so hard he won't settle and Darrow's gave him a lovely ride just to get beat. Uh, by a little short head there. Frankie's horse there possibly might give him a little bit anxious times whether he should ride this horse rather than best of the best in the, the Epsom Derby because 
this is a fair sort of a race. They've finished six lengths clear of the other horses. But let me ask you, Willie, as a jockey, because it's a very interesting thing you point out here. Frankie's given him a backhander and then actually put the stick down and, and rode out hands and heels. And well, up. from the half a furlong out, he could see that uh, Darrow had no more to give. Darrow couldn't get his horse's head in front, so Frankie knew that, it, that the stride that his horse was in that he wasn't going to get by him. So, you know, it was a, a nice bit of riding there in the end. You know, there's no, 